Now you believe even less. So you tap even less potential. Because it's not going to work. You know it's not going to work. You take even less action and you get even worse results and your brain goes, see? And now you're on the downward spiral. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Who's ever experienced this in your life? Say I. What if the opposite happened? What if something happened that didn't change your potential? You don't need to change your potential. You got plenty of potential. What if something changed your sense of certainty about something? We felt absolutely certain you could make it happen. When you're certain, do you tap more potential or less? Which one? Which one, guys? Come on. More. And when you believe it's going to work, do you take little action or a lot of action? When you take a lot of potential with a lot of action, what kind of results do you tend to get? Great results. When you get great results, what does it do to your belief? Your brain goes, see, I told you you were a stud. I told you you could do it. I told you it'd work out. Now you believe even more. As a result, you take even more potential. You take even more action. You get a better result. And your brain goes, see, I knew you could do it. And now you're on the upward spiral. This is how the rich get richer or the poor get poorer. How happy people get happier and sad people get sadder. So the secret to this is not to change your potential. It's not even to change your action, because if you change your actions and you still don't believe it's going to work, those actions are weak. It's to change your belief. Now you say, well, how do I change it? That's a good question. Well, there's two ways primarily that this happens. One way we get beliefs is just by repeating something so often with so much certainty that we start to believe it. We start to feel certain about it. I'll give you an example. When you're a kid, did you ever have somebody like a mom or dad or somebody say to me, could you get me the salt? And you're sitting at the dinner table and you don't want to get up, so you say, I don't know what the salt is. And your mom or dad says, go get me the salt, it's in the kitchen. You go, but I don't know what the salt is, you get me the salt. Fine. And you think to yourself, I don't know what the salt is, I don't know what the salt is. And you go, it's on the second shelf. You open up, you look at the second shelf going, I don't know what the salt is, I don't know what the salt is. You look, you really do look. It's not here. Your mother and father says, it's on the second shelf. I don't know what the salt is. It's not here. They walk right beside you, they reach right in front of your face, and they go, what is this? Who here's had an experience like this in your life? Say, I. Now I got a question for you. Did your eye see the salt? Yes or no? Yes. But your brain didn't allow you to perceive it because you kept saying, I don't know what the salt is. I don't know what the salt is. With such certainty, it didn't want to turn you into a liar with yourself. And in psychology, we have a term for this. It's called a scotoma, a blind spot. Anything you tell yourself over and over and over again with enough intensity, you start to believe it you start to only see what's consistent with that. But interestingly enough, you can change a belief by repetition, but you can also change a belief just by having a new experience. When people come to my seminars and we do a fire walk, people think they'd never walk on fire, it's impossible. They, within a few hours, go storming across this fire that's 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and they storm across it without burning. And what it does is their brain goes, my God, if I can get myself to do this, My God, I can then easily do these other things I thought were difficult. You give someone an experience. Let me show you what I mean and how we can use this. Stand up just for a moment. We're almost done. Shake your body out. Shake it out, shake it out. Stretch nice and high, up, up, up. Over to one side, give it a deep moan. Other side, moan. Back, moan. Forward, deep moan. Shake your body out, shake it out. Now I want to show you just how quickly a belief can change and how it affects you. So here's what I want you to do. Put your feet together, pointing straight ahead. So they're physically touching, pointing straight ahead. Then I want you to take your right hand with your right index finger and point straight in front of you. And when I say now, I'm going to ask you to keep your feet pointing straight. And when I say now, you're just going to comfortably turn clockwise. And notice where you stop comfortably, where the edge is. Okay, go ahead and turn clockwise without turning your feet. Notice where you stop. Okay, come back around. Take your finger out of your neighbor's ear. Drop your finger. Now, most of you know that peak performance athletes who are the best usually tend to visualize their goal, don't they? They see it again and again. Now, some people say, I'm not good at visualization. But if I asked you to close your eyes and tell me what color my suit is, you could tell me. Because even though you don't stop usually and see the picture in detail, your mind gets it very fast from your unconscious. But everybody visualizes to some extent. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to do something real simple. Keep your feet together. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine your finger is coming up again. Don't actually do it. Don't actually do it, but imagine your finger is coming up again. And kind of see it or feel it coming up again. And then see and feel yourself turning twice as far this time. 
twice as far, and it's fun. And then in your mind, with your eye, feet still together with your mind, imagine the finger coming up again and turning three times as far this time. And each time you do it, it gets easier, your feet stay straight, and you're like a little kid every time you go further. This time your finger comes up, and you see and feel yourself turning all the way around like an owl. Your feet stay in front of you, and your head turns all the whole way around. Do it one more time and enjoy doing it, going further every time. Now, open your eyes, bring your finger in front of you, and turn as far as you can comfortably and watch what's happened. Go. Wow. What was that moaning about? How many of you went significantly further this time? Raise your hand. Say I. How many of you went at least 25% further this time? Say I. Okay, have a seat and answer this question for me then. Here's the question. Put the graphic back up, please. Here's my question. Why did you turn further, so much further the second time? Did you have the potential to turn as far as you did the second time, the first time you did it? Was the potential there, yes or no? Sure. Could you have taken action to do it? Yes. But you didn't get the same result because you even have a belief about how far you can turn. But you know how you change a belief? You see it, you see it, you see it, you see it, and when the mind sees it enough times, it believes it. We all know, you've all heard. The mind does not know the difference between something it vividly imagines and something you actually experience. When you vividly imagine it, over and over again, all of a sudden your brain does it because the belief no longer stops you. You have a new belief. Even though you didn't know you installed it, you just installed the belief by going further. By imagining it, it becomes possible when you do it in enough realism. When I first worked with um, some of the people I worked with in the very beginning, some of the athletes, you know, example of Andre Agassi. I asked Andre about this and I was working with him. And he said, Tony, I won Wimbledon 10,000 times. I said, what do you mean? He said, since I was a little boy, I visualized the day I would win Wimbledon. And the day I won, when I walked out there, that picture you're showing, I visualized that when I was 12, over and over again. And that day, it was almost like I stepped in the picture and every part of me was certain and I knew I was going to win because I was in that experience. How many follow I'm talking about here? Say I. So the first key to changing your life, we said, is to change your state. How do you change your state nice and loud? By a radical change in your what? Come on, in your what? In your what? Or a radical change in what you are focusing on. You change what you focus on. You change the decision of what things mean. You change what you do. You change who you spend time with. You make a decision and you go through the five steps. Step one is you raise your... Come on, guys. Raise your... That's right. Which means turn your shoulds into... In addition, though, once you raise your standard, you've got to change your limiting what? Beliefs. If you want to shift that, shift it by seeing it, shift it by conditioning it. Those are the two keys that will make it happen. Now, third key, really important key. Let's say you have a high standard, and let's say you believe it can happen. Step three is you must model a strategy that works. You must model a strategy that works. What does that mean? It means success leaves clues. You don't want to reinvent the way to succeed. If someone is successful at anything, and they've done it again and again, they're not lucky. They've got a strategy that works. Let's pretend for a moment you have a goal. Let's take a silly, simple goal. 